What's up, everybody? Back again on the podcast. My name is Ryan Thomas, and of course, you are tuning in to the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Back again for another edition of the show, and obviously, we're going to be, you know, starting this off. I'm going to be starting this off with the seventh overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft as a part of the uh, 32 picks in 32 days segment. We'll be running through the seventh, eighth, and ninth pick. Uh, in the 2018 NFL Draft, that would be Tampa Bay, that would mean Chicago, that would also mean the San Francisco 49ers. So let's get started. The seventh overall pick is held by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who obviously have some bright spots on their roster. Mike Evans just signed to a five-year extension. Uh, Jameis Winston, you know, obviously the first overall pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, but Tampa Bay going into the 2017 season to me was seen as somewhat of a quote unquote sexy pick for a playoff spot in the in the NFC. That did not happen. Tampa Bay went five and eleven, had a very very disastrous season, and showed that they have a lot more work to do on both sides of the ball. So in terms of their strategy. Heading into the seventh overall pick of this year's NFL Draft, my strategy, if I am the GM of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, is to take the best player available. Now, to run through the scenarios that that I've ran through so far, um, you know, to play spoiler and, and talk about the the picks that I think will be picked by the time Tampa Bay picks at seventh, would be Saquon Barkley, be Bradley Chubb. Uh, actually, it was Saquon Barkley, Quinton Nelson, where I think it could be Bradley Chubb now, now that they made that JPP trade. Uh, let's just say if Barkley does go first, I think in this scenario, Barkley going first, Bradley Chubb going second, Josh Rosen to the Jets, Sam Darnold to the Cleveland Browns at four, the Denver Broncos taking Baker Mayfield at five, and then Quinton Nelson actually going sixth to the Indianapolis Colts. That would leave who I believe is the best defensive player in this draft outside of Bradley Chubb left for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the secondary for Tampa Bay has been abysmal. Their defense has been lacking um, ever since, you know, I'd say probably since their Super Bowl run. But to me, when a team goes 5-11, and that means you need a lot more than, than just one position. You need to take talented players and to me the most talented player left at this pick at this point that I think would really help the Tim Bay Buccaneers that would add a cornerstone player to their defense outside of Gerald McCoy would be Alabama defensive back and safety Minka Fitzpatrick now originally when when the mock drafts were first created and, and you know circulated throughout this throughout this year um, Minka Fitzpatrick to me was a top five prospect and I think you know obviously with some trades and some some moving around and the combine and things like that that changed a little bit a little bit uh you know of the of the draft stock that changed his draft stock just a little bit for Minka Fitzpatrick great player I think he's a fantastic player but I think that kind of moved him out of the top five this quarterback talk has been something that I definitely think has has led to these quarterbacks being so highly rated. Now, I also alluded to the fact that at fifth overall, Denver could potentially take Minka Fitzpatrick. They have a lot of uh, you know players in their secondary that have come and gone. One of them being Akib Talib. Minka Fitzpatrick could find his uh, NFL home in Denver. But for the sake of this scenario, for the sake of the mock draft thus far. I'm going to go with Minka Fitzpatrick, 7th overall, to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I can talk about the fit all day long. He's he's as easy a fit in any scheme on any team as any player in the draft. What I mean by that is he plays corner, he plays safety. You could line him up either way, and he's going to produce for you. I really like Minka Fitzpatrick. I really think he's going to be a key contributor and one of the front runners for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Um, you know, I definitely, definitely believe that. Bradley Chubb is another one that I really like, but I already have him going to the Giants at second overall, the best pass rusher in this draft. Um, but Tampa Bay going with Minka Fitzpatrick w- would definitely help their team. 
adding not necessarily the, the biggest position of need. I feel like there's kind of scattered positions of need for Tampa Bay, but I think it would provide them with a player that is a top-notch player getting one of the better players in this year's draft. And I want to talk about just Tampa Bay a, a little bit more. I want to talk about them as an, as an organization right now. 2015, you go back, the, the podcast, my podcast, the Thomas Take, the podcast you're currently tuning into, wasn't around yet. I didn't start it until 2016. But I did obviously have a voice in terms of my writing and, and my, my sports writing background. And when I go back to 2015, and I have some of the papers in front of me from three years ago, from my filing cabinet, I talked about how, wrote about how, at one overall, first overall, the Tim Bay Bucks had the first overall pick. They had two quarterbacks staring them in the face. I would have taken Marcus Mariota instead of Jameis Winston. I like Mariota more. I think Mariota is more versatile, um, great arm, great pocket presence, great scrambling ability, and I felt like he was more ready than Jameis Winston. And I hate to say it, but I know I don't mind boasting on this one. I was right. Um, I think Jameis Winston is is not as far along as people think. People thought that when he was the first overall pick, he was going to come right in and, and do big things. He did throw for over four thousand yards. He did do the things on paper on the stat sheet that you would think, "Wow, he's doing really, really well." But I I don't think he has progr- progressed progressed the way that that I thought he would. And uh, or that or that anyone else thought he would. I actually thought he would be better than he is now, but still not as good as he as he is currently. He's just not there. You got all these weapons around you. You got Mike Evans. You got Deshaun Watson. You drafted a stud tight end in O.J. Howard last year out of Alabama, which leads me to believe that that they obviously see something on that on that team, which could lead them to taking Fitzpatrick. You see a lot there. Um, you know, in terms of what they what they have, and Winston hasn't necessarily put it together. I, I'm just not seeing it yet. And and maybe you know you get some defensive playmakers out there. You know, in this year's draft, one of them being Minka Fitzpatrick, who I, I think would be the front runner for them at seven. Um, actually, would be a steal based on his talent level. The the Bucks would, in this scenario, be very lucky to get Minka Fitzpatrick, mainly due to the fact that I have quarterbacks going three, four, and five to the Jets, Browns, and Broncos, respectively, Rosen, Darnold, and Mayfield. That leads Minka Fitzpatrick to kind of slide. A true top five talent, one of the best players in this draft, would lead him to slide at seven to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Tim Giles says, Winston, way overrated in my opinion, and I I agree with him. Um, I don't want to say he's overrated because there's definitely skills there. There's definitely a skill set there, but I'm just not seeing him reach it yet. I see him as a guy that that turns the ball over, and um, that could go down as the years go by. You really look at Tampa Bay, who who they have to work with in this particular division. It's a tough division. You got the Saints, you got the Panthers, you got the Falcons, and then you obviously have Tampa Bay. That division can change each and every year. Tampa Bay might be five and eleven in twenty eighteen, but twenty you know nine or or twenty seventeen, I should say twenty eighteen, they might be let's just say nine and seven. That that division, if you go look year by year by year, that division has changed. Uh, rapidly, you know, the Carolina Panthers were in the Super Bowl a, a few years ago, and they've kind of fallen off. The Saints were believed to be on the downward, you know, trend, and they made the playoffs this year. Arguably, should have been in the, you know, not arguably, but one play away from being in the NFC Championship game. So there's been a lot of um, back and forth in that division, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers need to kind of excuse me, reel that in and bring in not necessarily the the biggest position of need player, bring in the best player. And and that's my, my motto. I'm not really drafting based on position of need. I'm drafting based on talent level. The more talented players you have, the better you're going to be. Even if it's at necessarily, you know, one position. And I'm not even off the top of my head. I can't even think of, of any secondary members 
that are that are true studs like Minka Fitzpatrick on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Could be wrong about that, but I'm just I'm just not not seeing it. Um, there's also guys out there that that could make that impact that could that could come in you know defensively from this draft that could really be fantastic. And I'm not going to go into those names just yet because. I think that that would spoil the fun. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into those names just yet, but um, you know their defense has some pieces on it. One guy that I really like uh, from last year was Riley Bulla, who was a main featured player on the uh, on Hard Knocks, and that's a little bit of it too. The, the Hard Knocks exposure. Sometimes people wonder if that's good for a team, if it's bad for a team. Maybe in the case of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it was actually bad for them because it gave them this sense of overrated exposure. And uh, I think that might have built some some distractions. Brent Grimes, Vernon Hargreaves, um, a guy that I like, uh, you know, in their secondary, there's really not a whole lot in terms of true great defensive players. McCoy is decent, but you know they, they need to get better. I, I think all around, not necessarily just on defense, but but they need to get better. Um, and, and I think that their coach um, reinstating their coach Dirk Cotter w- was a little bit of a shock to me. I actually put out a piece on myfantasysportstalk dot com and talked about why did Tampa Bay not go after John Gruden harder. I know you know he wanted to go back to Oakland, but you know, he went there for the money, and, and that was his first love as a coach, you know, coach them and everything. Maybe not John Gruden, but I think they should be in more. They should have been more in the market to get a new head coach. There were a lot of very good candidates out there this year, um, you know, coordinator-wise, and uh, they, didn't, they didn't look to do that. And I don't think that that was... Uh, that that was a good choice. I I would have looked to go another another direction um at the head coaching position, you know, the, the head coaching role on that team. Um and I think that that if they're one 5 and 11 season away from from doing that again. Um I'm just not seeing the great coordinator c- quarterback, you know, great coordinator turned head coach vibing with his quarterback. I, I'm just not seeing that. So I would go Minka Fitzpatrick 7th overall. I would go with him based on the fact that this is a highly, highly talented individual and one that uh, I think could easily fit into that defense no matter what role you put him in, whether it's corner, whether it's safety. Fitzpatrick, Minka Fitzpatrick is the real deal, and it would be the second Fitzpatrick that they have because they re-signed Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, as their backup quarterback during the offseason as well. So <laughs> might have to have the M on his jersey. But onward and upward, I will be back to bring you 32 picks in 32 days uh, as we move on to the Bears in Chicago. We'll be right back.